Good morning. <coughs> Thank you for coming. Meditation session on Sunday. A uh, little bit teaching again. Lob John teaching. A mind training. And then meditate. So I think your motivation to practice meditation is that you're learning how to work with meditation in order to uh, find benefits from practice meditation in your life, right? Is that your motivation? Part? Uh, investigate your motivation. Motivation, according to Buddhism, very important, right? Motivation, your intention. Most people, I think, uh, their motivation to, you know, practice meditation is for sort of looking for or search for happiness, right? And to meditate is to support this sort of inner potential. Uh, and in Buddhism, there are so many sort of good forms of meditation practice, you know, so many. Um, and a good meditation practice, anyone, they develop. sort of awareness and mindfulness, mindfulness. So you can try uh, many different meditations, but I think what is more important is that after you choose a sort of form of meditation, you stay with it uh, and practice it sort of regularly uh, until you get sort of very easy, you know. Uh, otherwise, you know, sometimes people uh, choose sort of many different meditations. I mean, that's good, you know. Uh, but uh, sort of eventually get nothing, you know. I mean, uh, you practice this and that and so many different kind of med we have, right? So, but uh, I think that's good. First, you just investigate which kind of meditation really helps uh, your mind calm and, you know, peace, you know. But once you find something really good, then you should sort of uh, choose that meditation and stay with and uh, practice it sort of regularly and every day. Uh, and then, of course, you know, if you do that slowly, uh, getting better and better. Um, and uh, I think most <coughs> people really like about Buddhism is that <laughs> the Buddha uh, was a very simple person, right? He uh, is not something we sort of could never be. Uh, he was just like you and me and um, just a very simple person and very kind person. I think that's why people really like it. And uh, But uh, the difference is then he sort of um, can let go everything and enjoy it sort of moment by moment. Uh, and we can't, right? That's kind of different. 
we uh, do experience happiness uh, with these things outside ourselves. Buddha experience all the sort of happiness and all this calm and peace and not out. He's, he's not looking for happiness and peace, uh, not outside. Uh, he searched inside and he found it. And we sort of do experience happiness uh, with these things outside ourselves. But that kind of, you know, I mean, sometimes, uh, of course, there is happiness, you know. Uh, but that kind of happiness is kind of very poor quality. If you look always outside, not look inwardly, look outside and find out happiness. You will, but you know, this kind of happiness is really poor quality uh, of happiness because, you know, it doesn't truly satisfy us and free us from our problems, you know. That's why I call this very poor, very poor quality, not good quality. But if you look inwardly and find a happiness and peace and freedom, and that's really good quality. And we, you know, everything, everything we do is actually for find sort of real happiness and avoid suffering, uh, right? Uh, that's. Uh, that's always, that's always, and we sort of, uh, <clears throat> if we do not realize that all the sufferings and happiness depends on the way in which mind develops this habit. And instead we put them sort of blame on external objects and situation alone, uh, then the suffering a negative karma, aggression, all this will grow sort of stronger and stronger and sort of never uh, chance uh, to see uh, the, the happiness. Uh, you know, this is what we called, you know, uh, all this sort of appearance uh, arises as enemies, we call that. You know, uh, when you are sort of unhappy, unpleasant, uncomfortable, then everything you see, you hear, everything is something wrong, right? Uh, that's the Gardamba masters, the Lobjong mind training masters, they call everything you see, you hear something wrong when you are very unhappy. That's what we call all appearances arises as enemies, yeah. Everything is something wrong, right? When you are unhappy. Because you're looking for the happiness and avoid suffering outside, not inside. Uh, if you realize that all of this sort of depends on your mind, then whatever you do, your mind will be sort of happy and uh, peaceful. Um, your whole sort of activity or attitude uh, will be very poor uh, and uh, pure, not poor, pure, and everything will sort of turn out excellently. then you are living in this sort of impure world, this samsara, but your mind will sort of experience the, you know, splendor of happiness. It's like a bodhisattva. Uh, you know, bodhisattvas, even though here in this samsara, they can see happiness, they can see oh, people are suffering, all these things, but they always, their mind experience, you know, they understand everything and they, you know, uh, compassionately everything, and and then their mind is so very happy. And generally, so we are and we are always busy uh, all the time, and we sort of uh, make money, and then we sort of, you know, um, 
spend our money for, you know, buy a house or buy, you know, uh, comfortable chairs and furniture, you know, vacation, good food, all of this, you know. I mean, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with having sort of lots of things, properties and relationships, and nothing wrong according to Buddhism. It's really good. But the problem is that the attachment, uh, you know, if you uh, all only sort of, you know, uh, looking for outside, um, that's why Buddha said all the, the, proper, proper, the, the things, money, everything is really, really good. We need that. But only that, only this never give us sort of satisfy and happiness and freedom. Because we are wrong, looking for outside. Not only, you know, outside is not good. You know, we also think about inwardly. You know, that's why meditation is really, really good. So, attachment. We, uh, you know, um, Buddha said you can have, uh, even though like monks. You can have lots of things, millions of dollars, if you have, but without attachment. We see them as a heaven, sort of some inherent ability to satisfy us, right, as a being, sort of cause of happiness. But they cannot be because, you know, um, they do not last long. Everything by nature, sort of, constantly changes and eventually everything all so all these things are disappears right you the people uh, and all the animal all we sort of depends on impermanent things impermanent things we have to recognize that But I think, uh, you know, always if, you know, um, how wonderful, if we enjoy with our things and relationship without attachment, I always think, think that. If there is a problem, then, you know, just recognize it and um, everything is sort of naturally changed and just let go. Do you think it's possible, like, you know, you have a property, money, relationship, uh, all good, part of our life. But can you do that with, uh, without attachment? Can you? Cannot. People, sometimes people think can't because uh, if you have no attachment, then, then uh, you know, there's no sort of enjoyment. Well, I think that's wrong, you know. The cause of suffering is attachment, I think. Uh, for me, you know, if I have a nice things and I sort of attach it to it, then it is really benefit, you know, to think about impermanence and enjoy moment by moment rather than to think about uh, it in, in, in the future, you know, and sort of uh, make a big plan with it. For me, that doesn't work. You know, I just enjoy moment by moment. And uh, maybe you think that's not a good idea. But I think, for me, uh, there's no future. You think, oh, this, this person is not so good because he doesn't have future. Which means, for me, like if I make a big plan in the future, it doesn't work. Just, you know. Enjoy day by day, moment by moment, 
then something is really happen, you know, in the future. No problem. For me, if I make plan, it doesn't work. I don't know. I tried it, but it doesn't work. <laughs> then just let go and, you know, it will happen something, you know. I don't have, you know, big, big plan in the future. Just, uh, you know, I don't know for you, but for sure, all the, the attachment makes us very unhappy and very uncomfortable. <coughs> Let's say you have a relationship, right? And then you really attach it to this relationship. And then something happened, you're really unhappy because of attachment. Attachment and also jealous, all these things these negative emotions. But when you have a nice relationship, which means with compassion, with love, love and compassion is completely different than attachment. Very nice if you have a love and compassion relationship. It's really nice. Care each other, love each other, that, 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 that is not attachment. Don't misunderstand. Attachment is totally different than that. Uh, I think most people really uh, sort of misunderstand between love and attachment. Uh, but this love and, love and compassion we have to sort of developed, right? Uh, we, medit we, medit we need to meditate on that and then sort of, you know, um, also, you know, I can see, you know, some people really bad sort of emotion, bad, bad motivation. Uh, some people are really kind, you know, kind mind, you know, they have a very nice, uh, you know, compassion and love. Some are not. It's so big different. So I think we can change that. I can see, you know, um, people are so different. Some people have, you know, just to develop their compassion and love, right? Some people, even though don't, but they have a sort of, uh, you know, the love and compassion, you know, sort of... Uh, when they're born, you know, that way. So different. And if you have a love and compassion, then everything is really nice. And also, you know, the meditation also, if you meditate on the nature mind, It creates more space in your mind. Look at your mind, see what you're doing with your mind and with your sort of things. And then there is more room to sort of experience and more room to um, let the sort of ego mind dissolve. Many people, I, I think, no idea how to face their emotions and they sort of suffer because of the attachment. And I don't think uh, most people think much about the fact that attachment and aggression and negative actions are not the cause of happiness and peace. Because if they understand negative thoughts, the cause of suffering is the negative thoughts, then they should, you know, really uh, try to diminish this, right? I mean, we can if you meditate. The, you know, our negative thoughts make really suffering. And moment by moment, the thoughts and the feeling, 
all this arises all the time, and every thought is based on sort of perception or, or belief, you know. And most belief comes from um, the ignorance, you know. That's why the attachment also comes from ignorance. Usually, uh, this mind that we identify as the self, which uh, uh, we call ego mind. Because control everything that we do. That's why the meditation is not that easy, right, at all. When I teach, most time, I'm not, I'm not teaching that nice things. I always say the difficulty things. That's why sometimes it's not good. People say, oh, then difficult, you know, I can't meditate, you know. But I think it, always we need to think about, you know, uh, the difficulties and uh, because you know uh, then you have sort of you know you think oh meditate always people sometimes you know uh, meditation is kind of easy and easy to diminish all these negative thoughts and you might think that also having established a meditation uh, practice in your life, uh, you will always be sort of, you know, uh, very happy and everything will sort of go very smoothly. I mean, it could be, you know, happens and uh, it's possible. But uh, most, of, uh, most of us, you know, will sort of encounter difficulties on the path of Dharma. You also need to know that, you know, I mean, because you, you can see the, the biographies of the, um, the great masters uh, tells us that they, they all went through difficulties, really, and challenges and sort of disappointments, you know. Um, not always easy. Even though I think about Buddha himself, his life, not that easy. But they used these sort of challenges to make their practice, and uh, it pushed them sort of to discover a, a sort of treasury of hidden inner resources. That's in general, right? But for you and us, you know, I think uh, sort of having taken up meditation, there is a no need to make big change in your lifestyle. You can keep sort of, you can keep your job, you can keep your friends, uh, continue to live in your, you know, nice house and have a relationship, just enjoy your life and then, you know, uh, meditate, you know, try to uh, let go attachment. Uh, that's, I think, very nice for us. We cannot give up everything, and like Malajipa or like a Buddha, uh, he came to royal family and he left everything behind, and then he just went to a jungle and meditate, you know, year by year with this challenge, with difficulties. I mean, eventually they get enlightenment, but we we are not uh, sort of uh, looking for long-term goal. We are looking for always short-term, right? This life. So I think then you sort of, you know, uh, just don't think that big change. Big change is not that easy in your life, I think. I mean, superficial changes, you know, are not nature, you know. And uh, slowly meditate and slowly sort of nature changes created by meditation are real beneficial both for yourself and, uh, you know, others. According to Buddhism, it's really nice you should, you know, uh, learning slowly about Buddhism and definitely you will 
find more and more and more and more deeper and deeper make sense all the time. That's for sure. Uh, most people don't understand very well about Buddhism. Then difficult. So just, uh, you know, read the book and listen to teaching and slowly, you know, learning all this. Uh, and also with uh, sort of, uh, you know, just in general meditation, love and compassion. Uh, because meditation is in internal, not, not external activity. You have to know that. Your practice will transform your mind on a sort of subtle level and uh, making you more sort of sensitive and clear and giving you sort of fresh insight into ordinary day-to-day -day sort of experience. In order to experience the benefit of meditation, it is necessary to um, practice regularly. I mean, it is not sort of uh, successful all the time, but try to meditate every day, you know. Uh, then you will get sort of better, right? And through meditation, we can sort of understand, we can recognize our mistakes and our mind to think and react sort of more honestly. Because, you know, meditation is to aware of what is you're doing, right? What is going on on your, your sort of, your feeling, your body, your, uh, you know, mind. I mean, all these thoughts and, you know, feeling or perception, uh, memories and the dreams, all this mind. We call this all mind. So we all have a sort of same basic experience, same basic problems, and same you know, potential. Meditation is not something really unsuitable uh, for the Western mind, Western mind. It's, I mean, I think there are different methods, you know, practice in different cultures, but you know, uh, it is good for everybody, meditation. But the final goal, the uh, enlightenment, is a long-term one, very long. I, I think there is a no way to get enlightenment um, just one lifetime like this. You know, we have a job and family and relationship and all this with, you know, busy, busy things and then there is no way to get enlightenment left hand, but that's fine, right? You know, I mean, that's meditation done with uh, uh, this goal in mind can and do also have the short, short-term benefit. We need that. And being enlightenment is not something you become. You need to know that. It is something you continually do. You know, find out yourself what is truth, what is real, and you will discover that there is, a, you know, a truth, um, virtues and non-virtues, things. And then once you discover that yourself and give up, you know, the non-virtues and bad things and then keep good things, this is you need to continually do. In this samsara, there is always happy and suffering, good and bad, up and down. That's, that's, we can't change that. I mean, you know, that's always. So we have to sort of um, do these kind of things continually, you know, slowly, not big change immediately in your life, but slowly change. You should slowly, you know, give up bad things, you know, uh, try to diminish this, and slowly, you know, uh, develop positive thoughts, 
develop your compassion, love and kindness, all this slowly, then you will understand more and more, slowly. Uh, no meditate, okay? <coughs> One of the first things you will notice in this meditation is how often the mind wander off. During meditation, there are different feelings, different thoughts. All this will arise, right? But you should recognize it. And the essential thing is not uh, to let any feeling, thoughts, without recognizing. That is the, that is the purpose of meditation. Uh, and if you recognize, understand your thoughts and uh, feelings, then it doesn't matter really what kind of feeling or thoughts arise and how many times your mind wander away. So you can bring it back to the, you know, uh, whatever your object, to, let's say, bring it back to the breath. Um, and as you follow the breath, uh, what you begin to see is the mind's constant inner movement. You should think about it and a little bit sort of uh, investigate this inner movement. And if you can't find it, or if you can't find a place this inner movement or, or where the mind stays, then just to relax there. No worry, you know, uh, where it comes from, where it goes. No worry that. You, need, you don't need to worry that. Just to relax. Once you realize the, the relaxation, it is possible to realize the, the sort of peaceful and clear mind. And you must know how to observe the, uh, the thoughts and mind and recognize the sort of presence of every feeling and thoughts um, which arise in you when you meditate. For example, when a, a feeling of sadness arises, and then you immediately recognize it, okay? Rather than follow the feeling of sadness thoughts. And if the feeling of sadness continues, you continue to recognize it. We are not doing this, right? Usually, we have difficult, sort of uh, very sadness. You think about the sadness. And this means like you build more and more these thoughts. You build up more and more. And then, you know, unhappy has come. But if you just don't think about sadness, let's say, for instance, sadness, you know, and just to recognize it, do you understand what is different between these two? Don't think about the sadness itself, but just to recognize it, which means look inward directly to your mind, what's going on. As soon as you recognize the, the sadness, the feeling, it will go away. It will dissolve into somewhere. That I mean, I mean, when you meditate, there's so many different feelings, thoughts arise, but we are follow that always. And then one thought, then another thought, right? So there is sort of, you know, no end. So we are doing that. But don't do that. Don't follow your thoughts. Just recognize it. Then you will see empty place. 
and peace and clear in, you know. That's the same, you know, if, you know, a different feeling or thoughts arise, just recognize in the same way. By doing it over and over again, your meditation practice sort of begins to train in you uh, how to stay without wander away your mind and will sort of understand more inside. And then you will find the happiness. I think that's the benefit, meditation. Uh, meditation, you know, uh, I mean, this is the mind training. This is what I call mind training. And these teachings, this kind of teachings, are very easy to understand intellectually. Maybe you think too easy. But when we meditate on it, not that easy, right? Not that easy. So that's why always, you know, uh, the teachers, masters, tell us that when you learn in something, not intellectually, but experientially, which means everything is understood easily, correctly. But when you meditate and Practice those, you know, teachings put in your meditation. It's not that easy. So you just, uh, you know, meditate every day. Uh, today meditation, we will alternate between looking at the mind and rest in meditation. So this means the way you do this is to look at your mind by focusing on the breath. Uh, look at your mind to see what you're doing with your mind, which means you recognize. In this meditation, you bring your mind and your eyes into focus by looking at your breathing. In this way, when you are focused on your breath, your concentration is directed towards looking at your breathing. And at the same time, you should look in also at your mind and its nature. Understand? Uh, you should practice, you know, uh, this kind of meditation when the emotion is not there. Then very easy, right? Just to, you know, sit down and practice uh, just, uh, you know, just like this, you know, let go everything. And uh, you do this, I'm, I'm positive that if you do this practice and with a little bit sort of uh, bodhicitta, compassion, which means, you know, uh, we, uh, when you practice this with pure motivation uh, for a month, let's say, 30 minutes every day, then you will know how to practice whenever the strong sort of uh, uh, your emotions comes up, then you know how to, uh, how to deal with that things. Uh, and then you will sort of happy and you will free Right? Right now, the, the negative thoughts, these, you know, uh, afflictions, defilements control us. We're not free. So if you are a free person, then you will enjoy happiness. You will enjoy uh, your life. So just, you know, uh, when you meditate, 
in Buddhism, let go. This is very important, let go. This is the sort of fundamental to Buddhism. So when you meditate, whatever your feelings, good and bad, just let go. And then try to meditate. Look at your mind inside, not outside. Not outside, inwardly. And recognize your feelings, thoughts, and your mind. This is you need to do over again and again and again. And the most important is you have to recognize what you're doing when you are not meditating. I think the problem is people meditate. When they meditate, everything's good, you know. Everything's good, easy. Just to relax and calm and peace and everything's good. When they not meditate, then everything's not so that good, you know. Um, According to Buddhism, the teachers always say the most important is you have to understand what you're doing when you're not meditating. But meditation is helps that, you know, uh, when you are not meditating. Let's say, for instance, you know, this is very important. When you meditate, love and compassion, right? Let's say like two hours a day. You can develop this love and compassion, right? And your heart is kind of, when you meditate, compassion, love, your heart is very warm and open and, you know, you understand others, you know, feeling others, you understand, right, very deeply. But you should investigate when you're not meditate on compassion, how you feel. How's everything? When you go outside, you see people, you see animal, you see things. How is your mind doing with those things? The good meditators, when you meditate on compassion, and then they're not meditate, and they see people, animal, all these things, automatically their, the compassions come, right? They will see and they understand. That's why this meditation once really sort of pushed you, really sort of. One thing is you understand more others than you, right? Because you understand yourself and deeply, and then you understand through that meditation, through the compassion, you understand others. Then you really want take care of others, want help others, right? Don't want to harm others. That's the benefit of meditation. That's the result of meditation. So important, when you not meditate, don't lose, don't lose your meditation when you're not meditating. Don't lose your mind when you meditate, that kind of, the, the, your mind, when you meditate, like peace and, you know, uh, comfortable, pleasant, right? Everything is nice, peace, right? You have to remember that all the time. So, let go. Let go. These two words are very nice. When I was uh, when I was Tibet, uh, I have a big letter like "let go," and then whenever I see this, it kind of remind me. You know, it's really help. Uh, when you get angry, you are touched to something very deeply, strongly. You need to see these words "let go." I mean, it doesn't help if you're, you know, angry, you continually, and this anger makes you unhappy. Better let go. And just to think about it, how you change. Think about the antidote. 
that makes you comfortable and open your heart, more room to experience, understand others' feelings. Understand? In this world, the people, we, are crazy, not so nice. Everything, we, people, make everything worse and worse, not better, right? We harm others more and more through this technology, you know, harm others easily. We think if we harm others and control others, then we will be okay or happy. That's ignorance, we call it. Because the cause of we're looking for the happiness actually suffering, or suffering. Opposite, the cause, in, cause of happiness, cause of suffering. We are, what we are doing, cause of suffering. We think cause of happiness, but it's not. So that's why people, um, we are doing not so good. So I think, you know, we need to understand more and more so through meditation. Meditation only uh, helps how to develop inner, the mind. Importantly, also meditate on this time, 21st century. I think meditate on compassion and love is the most important, profound, you know. I mean, how you develop other meditations without love and compassion? There's no way. Everybody likes to meditate on compassion, but you know, the great compassion is so difficult because of these circumstances. So we really need to think. <laughs> I always think that, you know, every day think, what is going on now? And then sometimes, well, I can't help others very, you know, but I can help myself. Avoid harm others. And, you know, uh, develop kind mind. And try to develop, let go. Let go. Sometimes I think, well, if I have millions of dollars, what should I do? Really not much, you know. I always think that a lot, you know, you know. If I have this, what, is, is that, does this make me happy or not? Well, I think I <laughs> think like this kind of things, you know, if I have, uh, if I, if I have, let's say, car, you know, does it make me happy or not? Then I have to pay the insurance. Then I have to, you know, all these things. I think better not have a car for me. Then everything easy. Because if I, have, if I don't have a car, then I have no suffering. <laughs> really. What should you do? If you have a million dollars, what do you do? You keep and you, uh, you make more, right? Never satisfy there. Because we don't understand. If you have more, you need more. That's we can see these, these millionaires. You can see easily. The Buddha said that. If you have more, you need more. They're never satisfied. Right? I don't know. Maybe you can let go and millions of dollars give away this, you know, uh, who are suffering in this world and you won't really help. Maybe you just want to keep in, you know, uh, make more. And then when you die, somebody will take it. You work, work for somebody. 
And that's happened in my life, I saw, you know. I always think that, you know, there is a Nepal, there is a guy who is, oh, I told this many times, do you remember? You know, who really works very, very hard, day to day. And never enjoyed with his money. Always, always, always busy, busy, work hard, hard, hard. And then he died. And somebody, also this money really makes difficulty and fight, you know, fight his, uh, his, uh, his brothers and his families. And then some, someone took it. He did not spend money. He just save and more, make more and more. And then we don't know when we will die, right? That's the problem. We think, we're, we think we'll never die, and then it make more and more and more and more, more, and then someone take it, someone take money. Your money is not beneficial, make you not happy. Like me, it's always happy. The good thing is I'm a very uh, happy person, all my life. I think because of I don't have money, you know, just enough. That's the perfect. And then something is happened, you know. Or if I go somewhere, and then money's come. You know, I have enough. I've been so many places, so many. I enjoyed my life everywhere. Should not, we should not think that if I don't have money, I can't do this and that. That's not true. Well, it's, you know, if you have, you know, lots of things, then you, you can do more. That's obviously. But if you don't, also no problem. So I think we, that's why I think Buddha, uh, the, these words are so power, let go. So power and so, you know, I think really great sort of instruction. Let go. I have a nice thing, enjoy, moment by moment. Something happened, let go. <clears throat> Why you worry? Everything's impermanence. Everything's changing. For sure, include our body, getting worse and worse. That's, that's, the, that's the nature. Why you worry? Just let go. And then when Buddha never say you can't have nice things. You can't. And then enjoy with it. If you don't, don't worry. If you don't have nice things, don't worry. If you have nice things, enjoy. Um, which means no attachment. We, you, me, touch to everything very strongly. I can tell that. Not good for our life. Just to let go, enjoy, moment by moment. This is very, very important in our life. Really, most people, like you know, 90% people are worried, stressed, always unhappy. What's wrong? Because they don't understand their life, you know, the essence of life. They don't know how to enjoy this. Well, I think that's all today. But really important. I really hope that you understand the essence of life, which means enjoy moment by moment, day by day. We don't need big future. The future is not here. Maybe we will succeed, maybe not. But the have problem is the worry in the future. So we don't need future. It's everything is naturally changing and happening, you know. The most important, enjoy. Enjoy your life every day. Do not harm yourself with negative emotion. Do not let control your mind by attachment. Angry, ignorant, you know, 
we should develop love, compassion, bodhicitta, you know, mindfulness, all this nice. No, doesn't matter who you are. Right? Very clear you are human beings with precious life, with precious body. We have to spend, we should, you know, we need this kind of good qualities, love and kindness, compassion, amazing. These are really, we cannot buy. You cannot, if you have millions of dollars, you can't buy your compassion. You can't buy your love and kindness. Only through meditation and understand. And this is the, the, the real cause of happiness. These are the real cause of happiness. So now, just to relax and comfortable, both your body and mind, just to let go, you know, just to relax. Deep, 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 deep breathe. Because this helps let go. Just to relax and let go your thoughts, your feeling, your situation, all things. Just to let go. Just to relax. There's no visualizations at all. Directly look at inside, look at your mind. Let go your feeling. Your thoughts. Do not follow your thoughts. Bring your mind back. And look directly at your mind. Peacefulness.
How are you doing? Good? Did you see your mind? <laughs> yes, no? Yes. yes. How? Lots of thoughts, running. running, talking, talking to you. Can you let go? The experience, the feeling, the thoughts are very difficult. Can you let go? Can you meditate uh, without thoughts for a minute? No? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not always, most time, yeah? How should we do this? How should we develop? Yeah, I know, practice, but we don't, right? <clears throat> Yeah? I had a question. Um, you meditate and then you calm the way down, calm the body down, the mind down, and the thoughts. And just slowly through practice, you begin to rest in the nature of mind. Right? And then you can visualize the Buddha field and you know, do guru or yoga meditation. No, pure nature mind is beyond that, beyond the concept. But you are maybe sort of uh, mixing, you know. Uh, yeah, mi mixing it up. Yeah, mixing that. <laughs> that's not. Uh, that's not the pure, the 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 truth of the nature mind, you know. Right. So you visualize something. And with the meditation. That's not the nature mind. Nature mind, I told you, right? There is a nothing can do. Just, uh, you know, there is a no teachings, no idea of meditations. Just uh, recognize it and then with familiar, yeah? Yeah, so uh, that's kind of final goal. Uh, that's beyond samsara and nirvana. Uh, but I don't think we need to think about that. We need to think about this life, you know, how to uh, turn out everything is excellently. Uh, that's, not a, that's not about nature mind. That's not about the ultimate uh, level. But I think, because always 24 hours, we our mind and body spend time with samsara in this world. So we need to focus more on that, how to develop kind mind and how to take care of our life. That's the most important first. And then this, you know, ultimate level. Eventually, we should think about it, but short term is more important than long. I mean, when you meditate, nature mind, investigate. Which is better if you meditate on bodhicitta or compassion, and or you meditate on nature mind? Which is better for your life? 
the benefit, which one is the benefit for your life? I don't know. Yeah. When you meditate in your mind, and then you see some, someone, how you feel through meditation in your mind, how you feel. You see this person's emptiness, or how you feel, how you experience. I mean, if you meditate on compassion, you will see this person, then you will understand his suffering, right? And you get more compassion, and you want help. <clears throat> and you really avoid harm this person, right? Um, and if you correctly nature mind, practice nature mind correctly, then yes, this also there, there you know, uh, you can also develop compassion through the nature mind. That's true, but there is a danger, you know. So, Think about, okay, think about your life and uh, uh, which is benefit and which is not. Uh, tell me, uh, not today, but think about what kind of meditation are you looking for? And uh, uh, that's for today. And I think uh, meditation actually very important. You should every day meditate every day, every day. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you have time, meditate. Um, but you need to investigate what kind of meditation you should meditate on every day. You know, the people are different. Some people like to meditate different things, this and that, you know, different things. Some people not. They just want to meditate on one thing. Like, for instance, bodhicitta. And then you meditate on everyday bodhicitta, and once you have bodhicitta mind, then you can, you know, meditate something else, right? Some people just want to meditate shamatha today, bodhicitta tomorrow, nature mind the after tomorrow like that you know change so uh, I don't know which one is the best but you should uh, investigate yourself with how which way sort of uh, easily develop your mind and diminish all thoughts we have been uh, meditate so long you know, we need to really, uh, uh, we need to really develop, and we need to sort of take care of our life. Are you happy person every day, or are you not? Then what's wrong? If you have enough meditation and develop these good qualities, definitely you will happy. Because you let go, you can let go everything and enjoy it moment by moment. That's all. Thank you very much. Dedication. May I attain in each and every life the slime of virtues of existence or peace. May I pursue the following kind of tourism, working for the welfare of others to the last scale. Through this very merit of mine, may every single sentient being eliminate all forms of negativity and practice virtue forevermore. May a spring precious bodhicitta take birth where it has not arisen, where it has arisen, it never went but continue to grow forevermore. May the spring precious Bodhisattva take birth where it has not arisen, where it has arisen, may it never end, but continue to grow forevermore. May the spring precious Bodhisattva take birth where it has not arisen, where it has arisen, may it never end, 
but continue to grow forevermore. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Good, good, good Sunday. Take care. Your life. Do something good. <laughs> really, I'm not joking. Do something good for yourself. Good for others. <laughs>